Hey guys, it's Ashley and welcome to day 9 of my 12 days of bookmas video marathon. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 books of 2020. It's day 9 of the marathon and I'm finally getting to my top 10 books video. In all honesty, I have been keeping track of this list as I read books throughout the entire year and a lot of positions on the list have changed. A couple of books have honestly been kicked off after reading a few of these and there may or may not be more than 10 books on this list. I do want to talk about a couple of honorable mentions before I I get started and also know that sometimes when I talk about a particular book I'm going to include the entire series with that book so if I ended up reading multiple books within one series throughout the year and one of those books makes it into a position on the list I will be including the entire series in that pick as well if that makes sense you'll understand more when I get started but without further ado let's go ahead and get this thing going so I have two books here that I want to give honorable mentions to because they're two books that I have not talked about in any of these videos so far that I've made for this 12 days of book miss thing. So these two books I have not talked about yet and I want to. So honorable mention number one goes to Felix Ever After by Case and Callender. This is a story about a young black trans kid named Felix who goes to this art school and one day he is kind of outed when somebody posts pictures of him pre-transition. So he decides to get revenge by figuring out who it was and to, you know, get revenge, do something about it. This story is one of the most heartfelt stories I've read this year. I absolutely loved it to pieces and I just want to take it and snuggle up with it and never let it go. I love it so much. Felix was such a great character to follow between all of the things that he had to go through in this story and his father who wouldn't fully accept him to his friend Ezra who would be there for him no matter what and all of the kids in the school and you didn't know who did this horrible thing to him and it was just like... Uh, you felt so bad and I just like really wanted to just reach through and like give him the biggest hug But I absolutely loved the like outcome of this story I thought the whole thing was just so cute no matter how many dark things that you had to go through to get there And it was just it was so good. I literally cried at the end. I love this so much And then the second honorable mention that I want to give is to clap when you land by Elizabeth Acevedo Y'all know I love Elizabeth Acevedo's writing. It's so good I love it so much and the story did not disappoint It's about these two sisters who have the same father But neither knows the other exists because one lives in New York while the other lives in the Dominican Republic So one day when their father travels from New York to the Dominican Republic to visit the other sister um, The plane goes down and he ends up dying and so both of them find out that you know their father has just passed and also that he had a sacred family the whole time and that the other person exists so the two girls go through very differing emotional experiences trying to come to terms with it and come to terms with who they were in um, relation to their father and in relation to the world as they knew it. So many of the poems and the verse and just everything in this book just made me want to cry. I loved this so much. I loved the sister aspect to it. I loved the relationship that they had with one another and how it grew and developed throughout the story and it was just so good. I can't explain. I love it so much. And so now we're on to the top 10 books I read in 2020. We're going to start with number 10. So number 10 on this list is none other than The Tower of Nero by Rick Riordan, which is the fifth and final book in the Trials of Apollo series. I couldn't go without talking about this in my top 10 books because I was looking forward to it throughout the whole year. I reread the entire series to prepare for it and it did not disappoint. I've talked about this series so many times this year but if you still don't know it's about Apollo the god. He is cast down as a mortal by Zeus after the events of the Heroes of Olympus and so he has to go through these adventures and trials and tribulations to try to gain his god status back. Essentially the story is about him as he works together with a demigod named Meg and they have to try to recover all of the oracles that he's supposed to be in charge of. Um, um, from one of the guys who has kind of taken over everything and is trying to rule the world. These books are so lighthearted and so funny and so heartfelt while also at the same time dealing with terrible things. But despite some of the darkness that these stories deal with, there is always like a funny lighthearted moment just not too far away and so it's a wonderful balance of things and that's something that I really love about Rick Riordan's writing. Even in the Percy Jackson series there were characters who died, characters who went through horrible things and yet they still managed to be optimistic and get to the good parts in the end. If that makes sense there's just you know a strength in overcoming your battles and things like that. And so that's what I really love about these stories, especially because they're for kids. So it's like having kids grow up and reading those sort of things, 
I just hope that it would give them the strength to be able to get through their battles too. Coming in at number nine on this list is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. This is about a young trans boy named Yadriel who is a brujo and comes from a long line of brujos or witches who sort of watch over the dead and um, help them pass over and um, do different things in regards to the dead. Yadriel is trying to prove himself as a true brujo but his family doesn't accept him as he is because he's trans and so he decides to go through with the ritual on his own and he tries to bring back a ghost in order to help send him on and instead the ghost doesn't want to leave and so he has to try to work with the ghost of Julian who was a kid that he knew from school and figure out how he died and what happened and all of those sorts of things. I've talked about this story a couple times on my channel. Again, just like with Rick Riordan's work, it's so lighthearted and it's so heartfelt and it just makes you feel so many different things while also dealing with some tough issues like what it means to be trans and when your family doesn't accept you. There's a lot of Latinx culture that's thrown in here that I absolutely loved learning about and just so many different things in this story that helped it give you so many feelings and made you so happy at times but also just like really brought the mood down at times too. It was very grounded in real world things while also having this brujo witchy sort of element to it and it was just a really 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 good read. I loved it. I loved Yadriel and I loved Julian and I loved everything about this story. It was so good. So coming in at number eight on this list is Legendborn by Tracy Dion which I've talked about so many times already so I will not spend a lot of time on it I promise. This is a urban fantasy King Arthur retelling sort of thing following Brie who is grieving after her mother's death. She finds out that the descendants of King Arthur are living at UNC Chapel Hill which she is attending for a bright futures high school program kind of thing and so she decides to infiltrate them because she thinks that they might have something to do with her mother's death and why somebody erased her memories about it. This story is everything that I wanted it to be. It was a wonderful urban fantasy. It had a lot of King Arthur tales thrown in there and sprinkled all around and just made it really really fun to read about and also Brie and the things that she's dealing with and all of the black history that's included in this is just so like grounding and so like current times and it's just Ah, <sighs> everything that I wanted and I loved it. Number seven on my top 10 books of 2020 is going to be This Is My America by Kim Johnson, which this is still the arc. I still haven't gotten a actual copy of this. I'm sorry. I will put a picture of the cover on top of this though because the cover is really pretty. This is My America follows a girl named Tracy whose father was wrongfully imprisoned and so she's been writing to this organization called Innocence X to try to get him off of death row. He only has like 275 days left and she is running out of options. But then one night things get even worse when her brother is accused of murdering a girl in from school and he ends up running away and disappearing and so she's got to deal with that on top of this. So she goes and makes it her goal to prove her brother innocent and by doing that she uncovers some of the very dark history of the town and some of the things that have been covered up essentially because of it. I read this story in five hours. Like I read the entire book, like 300 and some pages, I read it in five hours. It was great. I absolutely loved Tracy and how far she was willing to go to protect her loved ones and her family. And I love how we dove into all of the things that are wrong with our criminal justice system today. It is just absolutely abhorrent that these things happen and they need to stop. And so I really love that this story focused on that and put a spotlight on it. It's definitely a very powerful story and one that I think everybody should read because these things happen. This is real life. This stuff happens and it's horrible and it needs to be stopped and the criminal justice system needs to be reformed and just really looked at because these things should not happen. Coming in at number six on this list purely because I love fantasy, as you know, is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. This was just such a good high fantasy story. I loved this book so much. Again, I've already talked about this multiple times so I won't spend too much time on it. The story is about Vin who is a street urchin living in this very horribly depressing fantasy world to be honest with you. She has this power that she doesn't really know what to do with or what it is and she's part of this thieving crew that doesn't really treat her very well and so one day Kelsier who is this 
more higher figure sort of thing, he ends up finding her and realizing what she is and what kind of power she has. And so he kind of takes her under his wing and together they work with his thieving crew to try to overthrow the government. It's a really good story full of awesome world building and crazy magical powers and things like that. And I really loved the mechanics of all of it. And I really loved Vin and Kelsier and all the characters that we follow. Everything about this story is great. And I can't wait to get to the second book, even though I've been putting it off, but I will get to it soon. Next up at number five is a book that I don't physically have with me, but that is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McKinston. Another book I've talked nonstop about on my channel and will not stop anytime soon. In this story, we have the first female president of the United States, whose son, the first son, ends up falling in love with none other than Prince Henry of England. It is wonderful, it is heartfelt, it is everything that I wanted, and I cannot say any more better things about this story. I love it to death, and I can't wait for Casey McKinston's other book, um, One Last Stop or One More Stop. I can't remember what it's called, but it comes out this year, and I'm so excited for it. I want to read it so bad. So the last four books on this list were really hard for me to put in a specific order of how much I liked them. Even now the order is not completely set in stone because there are some days where I'm like, oh, I remember reading that book so much more than this one. And there are some days when I'm like, oh, but that book though, I loved it so much more. So everything is still kind of like shifting around in my head, but for the most part, this is where they stay. So spot number four on my top 10 books of 2020 goes to Bear Town by Frederick Backman. The story is about a small town in the middle of nowhere Sweden that is obsessed with hockey. Hockey is their life. Hockey is their blood. Hockey is what is going to bring more funding to the town and give it a place on the map. If the town can win their hockey championship, I think it is, then they will get all of the good things that come with that exposure. So you follow all of these different people as this sort of groupthink mindset takes over and you see how it affects the people of the town and also especially after this horrible incident happens. It's like everything that's bad Bad with the world and everything that's good with the world combined into one and it makes you feel things. If you want to know how much this book actually affected me, go watch my reading books subscribers recommended to me video. I vlogged the whole experience. This book was I think the second book in that video and it really really affected me. It took a toll on me. It was just like heartbreaking to read about but also like just so good at the end. It was so good. Like you go into the story reading the very first chapter, which is just this, right? Late one evening toward the end of March, a teenager picked up a double-barreled shotgun, walked into the forest, put the gun to someone else's head, and pulled the trigger. This is the story of how we got there. So it's like the whole time you're reading, you're trying to get to that point where that happens, right? You're trying to piece together how this happens, and I'm telling you, you will not expect it by the end. You will not expect the way that this story goes. You won't expect the turn that it takes. It's so phenomenal. I loved this and I cannot wait to read more of his work. Number three on this list is the first where this is kind of like all the books in the series that I read this year rather than just one of the books. And that is the two books in the Nevermore series that I read, Wondersmith and Hollowpox, both by Jessica Townsend. This is kind of a no brainer for you if you've been watching this far through this like little marathon I've put up here. I absolutely love these stories. So of course they were going to be in my top three books on this list. I'll go through it really Really quickly, the story is about Morgan Crow, who is born on the unluckiest day of the year and deemed a cursed child. On the day that it, she is set to die, she is whisked off by Jupiter North to Nevermore, where she is going to compete to become a member of the Wondrous Society and enter their school. They are amazing stories so far. Hollowpox rounded out the first sort of arc of the story, so if you were thinking about reading these books, now is your chance because there's a really good sort of finishing arc to the first three books, and then the next three books are going to have their own little story arc but they continue it and it's just everything that I want and more and that's all I'm gonna say. Okay these top two books they will not be a surprise to you. You will probably already know what the top book is so I'm just gonna come out and say it. Number two on this list is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. The story is about a girl named Addie who makes a deal with the devil to be immortal. The devil, because he's an asshole, decides to make her doomed to be forgotten by everybody that she meets. 
So she can walk out of the room, come back, nobody remembers who she is. This story takes place through historical time periods as Addie is growing up because she was born in like the 1600s, so she's got a long way to go before we get to the present day, but we also flip back and forth between the historical time periods and also present day when she runs into a boy who works in a bookshop who ends up remembering her. If you haven't already heard enough about this story, where have you been? Because the story has been everywhere since it came out. There are so many emotions that you feel when reading this story. There are so many things that just kind of rip your heart out and like stuff it back in. The best way that I can explain it is you start off in the 1600s and you flip back and forth to the 21st century. So you have to piece together what happens between that time and present day as you're reading this story and as it's being pieced together for you. There's so much of the story that you're missing, so many things that are referred to that don't get revealed until the very end that just really make you so anxious while you're reading this because it's just so many things that you want to know how they end up and you don't find out until the very end and it's just Oh my god. This was a phenomenal story, one of the ones that I was looking forward to the most this year. It put me in a sort of reading slump for a short time afterward and I just, I don't have enough words to express how phenomenal this book was. It was amazing and everything that I wanted it to be and no wonder it took her like 10 years to write this book because this shit is incredible. Also there's a bookstore cat, so if you're into that, you should read this book. And so finally we come to the top book on this list, the top series that I read this year, which you all already know what it is. If you've seen multiple videos of mine over the past few days, weeks, months, however long it's been since I've started reading this series, you already know what it is. I shouldn't even have to say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. It's Scythe! and The Thunderhead and Toll by Neil Schusterman. I just realized I got those wrong. It's just Thunderhead and then The Toll, not The Thunderhead and Toll. Anyway, you know what I mean. I still only have the last two books physically, so that's why I'm only holding up these ones, but Scythe is also included in this. I don't have enough words to express what these books did to me. I have book talks up for all three of them, so if you've read this series and you want to know more of my in-depth thoughts, go watch them. The Toll I get a little crazy during, but don't worry, it, it's okay. If you haven't read these books yet, this story is a futuristic world of ours where we have conquered death. And so in an attempt to control the population, we appoint humans as scythes and we give them the ability to go ahead and kill people. Scythes are supposed to be empathetic, they're supposed to pick very randomly, they're not supposed to work on bias or not supposed to purposely kill somebody for, you know, their own gain or for revenge or anything like that. They are supposed to be the most objective killers in the world, right? So we follow these two characters, Citra and Rowan. They are both teenagers, just living their lives, and one day their lives are uprooted when a scythe invites them to become his apprentice. They both decide to accept because they know what that'll do for their families if they do become scythes, and the story sort of ensues from there as Citra and Rowan are training to become scythes and they learn about the scythedom, how it works, and all of the things that have become corrupt with it and how we have essentially corrupted the world, which is nothing new, right? These books are so good. They're so good. There's so many things happening in them, so many storylines that we're following, so many different characters, while all along there's this underlying current of we've basically fucked ourselves over. There's so many things in this story that correlate to real current time. So many things and themes that apply to the here and now of it, even though we're living in this futuristic world and it is absolutely terrifying to read about. This book scares me because even though it is fantastical in a way, even though it is sort of a utopian slash dystopian society, there are so many things in this book that you could just see happening in real life. If you've read this story, you know somebody in the world, whether you personally know them or not, you know of somebody who is like a Goddard. And it is terrifying that that can even be said. So the reason that these are number one on my list is because they just truly affected me in a very, very real way. They really just like tore my heart out, just like with Addie LaRue, and they stuffed it back in upside down and wrong way out. If you haven't read this series yet, I highly, highly recommend it. There's just so much in these books that I love and so much that draws, like I said, a parallel to current time right now. And it's so scary and 
that is what I love about it. Also Rowan Damish. I, I love, I love Rowan Damish. <laughs> and so you guys, those were my top 10 books slash theories that I read in 2020. I'm sure none of you were surprised by the top few picks, but I mean, what can I say? I like talking about the books that I love. I would love to know what the number one book that you read this year was. Was it a fantasy? Was it a romance? Was it a sci-fi? Was it something that you were expecting? Was it something that you really didn't have any expectations over and it really took you by surprise? Let me know in the comments. Scythe was definitely a story that I was not expecting to enjoy as much as I did. If you have heard about my history with it, I started it as an audiobook and never really got much through it until months later when I picked it back up and just flew through the whole thing. So it definitely was not one that I had expectations for, but I'm really, really glad that I read it because I absolutely loved it. But yeah, other than that, I think that is going to be it for this video. So if you guys want to follow me on any of my socials, all of my handles are in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching day nine, is it, of my 12 days of Bookmas video marathon, and I will catch you later. Bye!